Hi, welcome back. It's Mr. Rootsart again. And we're going to continue with our series on ionic compounds. I know there's a lot of videos. I said this the last time. There's a lot of videos that we're doing on this, but I wanted to um, just go through, uh, again, the naming of uh, going from name to compound, compound, sorry, name to formula, formula to name of the um, of our ionic compounds. And uh, in the last video, we talked a little bit about multivalent electrons. Now we're going to do some naming. I'm going to do some examples with you on how to name these multivalent uh, or compounds that have multivalent ions. So it's going to be exactly the same as our last video. I have a few examples here and uh, we're just going to go through these. So in this uh, video we're going to go from the uh, from the formula to the name. So here we have CUS. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to write down, first of all, I know that this is copper and sulfide. Now because copper is multivalent, right here, it has copper 2 and copper 1. I'm not really sure which one it should be, uh, so because it's two possibilities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down CUS. Then I'm going to write down our charges. So I know on, and I'm going to write down the charge of the anion. So sulfide has a charge of negative 2. Now in order for it to be balanced, that must mean that copper has to have a charge of positive 2 because there are no subscripts written here at all. Okay, there were no subscripts written at all. So now that must mean that it has to be copper. So, or copper 2. So when I write this down, I'm going to write down copper 2 and then sulfide. Okay, very simple. So it's um, in going from the uh, formula to the name, it's a little bit more difficult than when we did that uh, with uh, non uh, multivalent ions. But now that we have multivalent ions, uh, we need to actually pay attention to the charge. And we calculate this, or we figure this one out, from the charge on the anion. Okay, let's do another example. So our second example here, uh, we'll do this one in orange, okay, is PBBr4. So PBBr4. So we need to find Br, or sorry, PB is lead. It's right down here, and Br is bromide, which is right here. Okay, I know that I have uh, that bromide has a charge of negative one. Okay, that's right here, and it tells me that there are four of them. So I have four negative one charges, and there's again no subscript written below here. This is empty, so that must mean that I have to have four positive charges to balance this. I have four negative, we have to have four positive. So when we write this down, I'm going to choose right here. This is lead four, bromide. Okay, lead four bromide, All right? And again, it was this charge on the anion that allowed us to figure out what the charge was and which multivalent ion we're using uh, for for that uh, for that formula. So let's take again another look. Pb3n2. Okay, I'm going to write that down. Pb3n2. So again, we look at our periodic table. We're back again with lead. Okay, and we have nitride. So. Um, when we went from the, uh, when we were going from the uh, the name to the formula, uh, remember I did that little crisscross method. Okay, well we can actually do a reverse crisscross. Now we know here that nitride has a, a charge of negative three. Well, that's how we get this subscript down here. Well, that must mean that we have a charge of two because we're going to have six negative on this side. We have to have six positive on this side. So now we are dealing with 
lead to nitride. Okay, very simple. Okay, again, find out what the charge is here on our anion. And let's do our last example here. Fe2O3. Fe2O3. I know that oxide has a charge of negative 2. So that means that we have a total negative charge on this side of negative 6. So that must mean that we have to have a total charge here on our cation side of positive 6. So that means that this iron must have a charge of positive 3. So I'm going to look at iron. It's right here. So we have iron 3 oxide. And we always put uh, with our multivalent ion, we always name it with our uh, with the Roman numeral in brackets. Okay, uh, again, this is just practice. is a little bit more difficult than uh, when we have uh, ions that do not have um, multivalent ions uh, or uh, a different structure that we could have. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult. It just takes a little bit more practice, and you have to work through this a little bit slower. So practice, uh, work through your worksheets that I've assigned you, do a number of them. It's just a matter of being familiar, with, again, with where things are on the periodic table. And we'll see you in class.